only around 8% of workers in 1909 worked less than 48 hours a week. That's eight hours a day for six days a week. A decade later, it was nearly half of workers. So what happened? Happy Labor Day, everybody. Let's find out why we get to enjoy more time off compared to our ancestors. The labor movement around the turn of the century argued for eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, and eight hours for whatever we will. So let's list through the causes. Over that decade, union membership grew from 2 million to over 4 million. Because of the First World War, the demand for employment grew. Military service was over 4 million. This reduced the unemployment rate down to 1.4%. Like, we can't even comprehend that today. We were ecstatic when the unemployment rate was 3.5% uh, a little over a year ago. A strong labor market means workers have more negotiating power. The economy was growing, technology was improving. On the government side, the progressive movement was in full force. The Adamson Act of 1916 reduced the work week for railroad workers to 48 hours. The National War Labor Board was full of pro-labor judges. And a handful of states specifically reduced the hours for female labor. In a research paper by the economist Robert Wapples, he estimated how much each of these effects contributed to the total decline in working hours over the decade. By far, the largest contributor was economic growth. Firms had to compete for workers like they had never had to do before. Offering higher wages, offering lower hours. Electrification meant more flexibility for the production process. He estimated the direct effect of union strikes contributed to 4% of the decline. In the decades previous, immigrants who came often only stayed temporarily, so they would work massive amount of hours, save up money, and then return to their homeland to establish themselves there. But because of World War I, many of them started staying there more permanently, meaning they were less willing to work massive hours. And we see that was a large contributor as well, 19%. This, of course, would be a temporary effect since we've had a lot of immigration since the past 100 years and labor wages and hours have continued to improve since 1919. More and more women entering the workforce helped reduce hours by 4%. And then government laws over there in gray, all the various ones put together, the specific industries that they were regulating accounted for 11% of the hours reduction. And then finally, the author finds that because of increased growth, because of the increased technicality of the jobs, firms wanted workers to stay with them longer. And so the large firms, the oligopsonistic ones, reduced hours in order to incentivize a more long-term relationship. So by far, economic growth is the most important contributor to the improvement in the quality of life of labor. Combine that with better labor representation through unions and more labor-protective laws.